Hello, this is Ace, and it's been a while since you've heard my voice on this channel. I could really do a practice playthrough, see if I can get along with this again. So, what possible game would be a good thing to start off with? Hmm. You know what? I can't see this possibly going wrong. No. Ghouls and ghosts, ghosts and goblins, whatever you want to call the series, they're both correct. Uh, this series is somewhat infamous and for its sheer difficulty. Now, I don't think this game is as bad as some of the others in the series. I think this is one of the more balanced ones. But it's still a ghouls and ghosts game, it's still going to kick your ass, as it were. But I don't think this is so bad. I'm also biased, quite heavily, because this is one of my earliest video games. So, let's quickly talk, why is ghouls and ghosts just so darn hard? Well, for a start, hit points. You get hit once, you get knocked out of your armour. You get hit again, you're dead. So, two hit points. That's that's not a lot to go with. Um, which we all find dandy if Arthur could actually move normally. But this is one of those games with what I like to call Castlevania jump physics. So you jump, you're glocked in. You can't turn around. Well, that, okay. Okay, you can turn around, but you can't change your jump. You're going. You're going. Secondly, the game is highly randomised. Enemies will appear just wherever the heck they like. Well, certain enemies, certain enemies will always show up in certain locations, but you're seeing the uh, skeleton murderers popped up all over the place, that's what they're called, and they all appear just wherever the heck they like, including places which is really not very helpful at all. So, that's kind of why Ghouls and Ghosts gets to be so darn difficult. However, Arthur has a few tricks up his sleeve. Obviously, he can pick up various weapons, some of which you just want to avoid, like the plague, such as the sword, the uh, axe, and the, the fireball, which is very niche in its power. So, honestly, you probably just want to go for the other staples, such as the current lance, the discus, or the, the, the best weapon in the game, the dagger, all which just sort of shoot straight forward, and that's kind of what you need in this game, let's be honest. But, I like this game, this is one of my earliest video game memories. Um, now, I when I, was a, when I was quite a lot younger, uh, gosh, Back in my day, I play as an old man, uh, I initially played with my dad's ZX Spectrum, which is, which you've ever seen a ZX Spectrum game, whopping 16 colours on screen, you know, two colours per sprite, you know, uh, not few, way fewer pigmen tried to get you, as you were, come on, over here, come on, over here. Don't vomit off screen, you disgusting thing. Um, but my actual first console that I had was the Sega Mega Drive. That's the one I grew up with. Um, I had Sonic 2, Golden Axe, Revenge of Shinobi, and Streets of Rage as my initial games. They were packed in with the console. But of my second batch of games, Ghouls and Ghosts was among them, so it really is one of my earliest video game memories. Um, incidentally, this is the first boss, Shieldner. Just want to, if you can, keep him off screen and have him not randomly charge towards you. He goes down fairly easily, but he can decide to charge. In which case, you're probably dead. You're just probably dead, let's be honest. If he wants to stand back, and not do anything. I'm quite, quite happy with that. Thank you, Shielder, for cooperating with my no kick points remaining. 
uh, yeah, Golden Ghost was one of my earliest memories. So, I guess in terms of difficulty, I kind of balanced because I played this for such a long time. Uh, does that mean I'm going to be particularly good at the game? Not necessarily. The game can still throw you a real curveball. Oh my goodness. Every so often. Because enemies will just appear wherever the heck they're like. Such as in this stage, the turtles and these dragonfly guys. They're, they're, they're random. In fact, the dragonflies have random speed as well, just to really mess with you. Uh, this stage has another gimmick to it. Uh, these platforms you will break every so often. I said these platforms will break. Thank you. And you just sort of need to memorise where these are. Because there's a, there's a death pit below you. That's fun. Such as this particular nice trap. So there's a broken pitfall here. But there's also one immediately to the right of it. So you gotta jump over that. There's also one here which is directly over the death pit. So that's fun. Grab the golden armor. As you probably notice, the golden armor does not protect you more than the silver armor. It is solely there for the magic attack. So, joy. And here's the most annoying enemy in any video game ever. They can. Mm. Red armor. I'm going to try and kill him and fail. But I've hopefully passed. Oh, I have not passed a checkpoint. Huh. I was, like, a screen away from a checkpoint, apparently. Ain't that fun. I am playing this on the harder difficulty, uh, which is closer to the arcade game than the easier difficulty. Not perfect, not a one-to-one. -one. You still get checkpoints at bosses, which I think single-handedly elevates this game play-wise over the arcade game. Obviously, the arcade game is way, way prettier than this version ever could ever hope to be. Um, but, every time I see an enemy with a pot, I get scared it's going to drop a really bad weapon. But I really don't want the uh, fireball, axe, or sword. They really, really give pure attack power. In fact, the game can even softlock you later in the game if you pick up the sword and go to the fourth boss. This is nothing new to the series because the uh, Nintendo game have bosses that are straight up immune to certain weapons. So that's fun. Oh, I will take that. So this is the best weapon in the game, the dagger. For the sole reason you get three projectiles rather than two. It's got the same power as the discus and lance. But you know what? Please die. Please. Can I just hit you once? Just once. Just once. There you go. Can I hit you twice? Okay. Three times the charm. Three times. Four times. There we go. Thank you for cooperating. I'm actually really surprised that spawned a dagger. I'm going to be perfectly honest. Uh, under normal circumstances, the chests at what they spawn isn't predetermined, but basically, depending on the how, what order you are. Uh, oh dear, that's. I think that's in the way. Uh, no, no, it's not. If I can keep the dagger to like the second loop, that's perfect. If I can not walk off an edge, it's also perfect. It's fine. So one of the things about this version of Ghouls and Ghosts, you do get infinite continues, which I think single-handedly balances the game out. There's no real punishment for continually dying. If you want to go for a high score, you can. This this run is doing all sorts. Oh my goodness! That that's. Of course, sometimes the weapon can spawn in such a location you really do not want to go after it. 
Can I jump up here? No. Nope. In which case, you don't want to pick it up, so the best thing to do is just to jump off and kill yourself. That is a legitimate strategy in Ghouls and Ghosts, to not pick up a absolute garbage fire of a weapon. Of course, you can't not kill enemies, that's the thing. Otherwise, you get very overwhelmed, you do not have the ability to move around these guys so easily. But, I think we're good. Here's the second boss, Cerberus. This guy is probably the easiest boss in the game. He's got a very predetermined pattern. So, you kind of just know what he's going to do every single time. Nowhere to stand. And he falls quite easily, he doesn't have much health. So, fairly... Not an easy stage, but a fairly easy boss, so that's all good. Moving on to stage 3, which is an auto-scroller. There are a lot of enemies here, and you will see a lot of weapon drops, which I need to avoid like the plague. Normally, you will pick up the dagger around stage 3, but I got it early, so that's good. I just need to avoid all these freaking enemies, and their weapon drops. And hope that one weapon drop doesn't spawn in my face. Like there, for instance. That's, that's perilously close. But if I can get past this segment, we're good. Okay, so this bit's not too hard. Just blow, yourself, blow down these fellas. And that's good. Now, I like this game. As I said, it's one of my earliest video games, so I'm probably biased and nostalgic for it, and just whoops, stood there like a lemon. But I like it. I have no reason to like this game, and it might just be pure nostalgia ca you know, carrying it for me. You know, there are no objective reasons to uh, like this game. It does quite a few weird design decisions that don't really make sense outside of an arcade game. Because that's all this game is, it's an arcade port. Uh, which is something the Sega Mega Drive was quite well known for. On its release. That's, that was its big draw, you got to play all these arcade games at home. I got to jump into that projectile, because I couldn't do much about that. I jumped. I jumped at the wrong time. I felt, you know, I ran into the projectile. Again, Castlevania jump physics. In fact, I kind of describe this game as a combination of Castlevania and Mega Man. You know. But that's what it feels like to me. Being able to shoot up and down in this game is way more handy than in the other Ghouls and Ghosts games. In fact, I think this is the only Ghouls and Ghosts game you can do this because. Why would I keep that ability? It's so good. But, you know, this game has a lot of baffling design decisions. For example, uh, as everyone knows about Ghouls and Ghosts, uh, you have to play for the game twice to get to the final boss. Um, which isn't fun. Which is, you know, just irritating. There is a second loop. The second loop isn't that much different to the first loop. You know, I really wish the second loop had more differences. It's just a few enemies shoot faster and... With a couple of change locations. It's really a really minor thing. It's not like, say, in Gradius, where the second loop is significantly harder than the first. But at the very least, you do get to use a different weapon on the second loop, which second loop, which does change it up just enough, in my opinion, to be warrant recording, as well as just wanted to. I I meant to jump straight up there. I didn't. Rip the golden armor. So you know, and honestly, the only reason to have a second loop like that is just to prolong the game time and prolong how much quarters people have to spend in an arcade.
You know, that's a bad design decision. I, I think that, that's really awful. It's artificially extended in the game. Granted, the game would last about half an hour without that. As you do. And obviously, individual segments of the game can be really poor. But I find video games are always, like, greater than the sum of their parts. There's no reason for me to like this game, but I just do. I think it's fun. I like, I love the atmosphere. The stage, uh, the stage design is actually pretty good and interesting. Um, I stood there in front of the boss and got killed. Uh, that guy is Gasso, by the way. He doesn't have much health, but he can be a real pain if he doesn't cooperate. And he can just decide to, to do a beeline for you sometimes. I don't like that. Not much I could have done about that. I could have possibly stood a bit further to the left, but... Alas, he made a beeline for me. I was dead. You know, there's little things like that. But I still love this game. I... Now, that might just be purely nostalgia talking. I'm not sure it is. If it was just nostalgia, I wouldn't still play this game to this day. There are other games out there I could be playing instead of this. But I just kind of love this game. You know, I prefer it over the objectively better Super Nintendo Ghouls and Ghosts game. That is objectively a better game. I prefer this one. Games are greater than the sum of their parts. There is no reason for you to like a game, but if you like it, more power to you. So much of the online discourse and critique on video games is sort of a... doesn't seem to just allow for a game being fun. At the end of the day, fun is subjective. It is just purely subjective. There is nothing um, you can sort of quantify. You either like a game or you don't like a game. That's it. I like this game. In fact, I'd say it goes as far as to say I love this game. And that's why I thought it'd be a good thing to just do as a practice let's play. Because uh, that's why I'm playing through this. I've already done a playthrough on my channel many, many moons ago. Gosh, I feel old. Come down here, please. Snake thing. I want to throw daggers at your face. Mouth thing. You know, I enjoy this game with its atmosphere. I enjoy the stage design. The bosses are kind of neat. You know, there's lots of reasons for me to like this. Let's see. Do I have to commit suicide? Nope. I really, really want to keep a hold of the daggers. If at all possible, it will make stage 5 so much easier. And I could go into all the minor mechanics of this game, which, you know, they do exist. Uh, there are definitely some techniques to this game. Uh, chess. Typically, um, you have to cross certain invisible boundaries to spawn a chest. I could not dunk underneath that. So, if you see me going back for some, to somewhere, that's just to spawn a chest. There you go. A little sequence spawned a chest. Unfortunately, the guy below me shot me. Hopefully, I can keep... I can eventually come across some more armor. That would be helpful. Nope, that's a weapon. That's not what I want. And I'm glad I'm able to play this game again. So, this past couple of years have been particularly rough for me. Um, you guys should possibly be aware by now, I've mentioned it enough times. I've had ongoing wrist issues. Uh, I, I can't trust this to be armor, so guess I'll go to the boss fight without any armor. It's fine, this, this version of the game has checkpoints right the bosses, which I think single-handedly elevates the game, um, play-wise. Best choice they could have made on this version. 
Uh, before I go any further, let's explain the strategy for this boss, which I, I only recently became aware you could do, which is to just sit at the side of the boss and fire from there. Now, the middle one you still need to take out. Um, obviously how the developers intended to take out all the hearts. But the left two and the right two hearts you can take out by sitting at the side, leaving just the middle heart to take out, and that makes this boss so much easier to deal with. So, anyway, I have had ongoing wrists and health issues. It's been almost impossible for me to play, say, video games for a while. Um, to give you a rough idea of what I'm dealing with, um, so, I'll throw some numbers at your face. Like I'm throwing daggers at this guy's face. Hopefully. If he cooperates and wants to take daggers to the face. Here, pal, take daggers to the face. No, you're not being a pal. You're not being a pal. You're being a annoying little brat. Uh, so, my left hand and wrist is about 20% weaker than should be average for someone my age. So that's the thing. Um, I'm also right-handed for a start. And yet, yeah, and the thing about your dominant hand, your dominant hand should normally be about 15-20% to 20 stronger than your non-dominant hand. That's just how biology works. Because obviously you spend most of your time using that hand, it should be stronger. My right hand is 25% weaker than my left. Which, given my left hand is already significantly weaker than it should be... Well, you see the problem. I have very little stamina there. Uh, I have very little strength there. I am in a lot of pain a lot of the time. Um, which just makes me feel even weaker. Uh, certain control configurations I just can't use. Um, I have found smaller controllers almost impossible to keep a hold of. I'm currently using an Xbox One controller. I've got to use fairly nice chunky controllers, so even say the Switch Joy-Con controller is, I think, too small for me to comfortably hold. I also have to find ways around certain things, so, as an example here, Ghouls and Ghosts, there's a lot of firing, that's a lot of button presses, that's, you know, a lot of button presses, which is, becomes quickly tiring after a full session. So one way around that, I'm using Rapid Fire, that's just it, I need to use Rapid Fire for games like this. Uh, certain games, I've been using button macros, so to explain what a button macro is, uh, you input a long sequence, or a, a, a sequence of inputs, into one button press. Which is, it's going better this time. Okay, we took a hit from the, uh, Guy because he decided to dive in my face, so this is going to go a bit harder. And also games like Mega Man, which you have to hold down a button input for a long time in order to do charge shots. That also gets tiring. Oh cool, armor, that's going to be very helpful. I should hopefully get to the checkpoint, because the checkpoint is just around the corner. So that's how I've been playing games, uh, at least retro games. I don't know what I could do as far as consoles go, certain games will just have to be inaccessible. Uh, I have been doing physiotherapy in order to try and strengthen myself again. That's incidentally where I get the numbers for just how weak I am, I got shown directly like the graphs and data and all that. Um, and I just thought it'd be good for you guys to just get a good number on how I'm doing. 
Uh, we are approaching the boss rush of the game. We have to fight multiple copies of the stage 2... Uh, no, the stage 3 and the stage 1 boss in sequence, as well as the final boss from the original Ghouls and Ghosts game, Ghosts of Goblins. Uh, multiple times. This section by itself is just pretty damn difficult. Uh, I think the hardest segment is just that room above with the two shieldness. If you can take down one super quick, which doesn't look possible because he went out of my reach. Uh, take down one, the second one should be a lot easier because you've got enough room to manoeuvre. Uh, if I can keep the golden magic here. I should. Okay, that didn't quite work as well. Oh no. Again, try and take out one of these guys, then you can... It's a lot easier to take out the other guy. And finally, we've got a load of gasors. There's about three of them in sequence. They've got less health than the original. But you've got to take out three of them, and... If you can sort of do so... Whoa! Okay, chasing, chasing, chasing. Go off. Thank you. Whew. So, let's see if I can get some armor back. Nope. There's one more boss in the sequence, so if I can get boss armor here, and take down this last shielder, who is... Whoa! Okay. Okay, we're good. Uh, if I can get... Okay, we've hit a checkpoint. This is now the last boss of the stage. Belzebub, who is just the hardest thing in the game by a long shot. Uh, this guy can have absolutely random movements completely screw you over. Uh, if he decides to do a beeline for you, which is funny because he's made out of flies, laugh, please. There's not a fat lot you can do about it, he can just sort of corner you, we'll see what happens. If he's, okay, lifted. He can decide on a whim to keep going and there's nothing you can do about it. Oh, I went way too early there. Please die. Please die. Please die. He's dead. Oh, dear. That is... That's probably the hardest thing in the game. Um, you can get stuck really hard there. But we've done loop one of Ghouls and Ghosts. I've kind of explained my situation, what's going on, how I'm dealing with it. Obviously, I've got to be really, really careful going forward with regards to my health. Um, I can only play for so long. Certain challenges are probably off limits, at least for now, until I've strengthened again. Um, physiotherapy is going to be a long process. I, I, I've not fully recovered. It's going to, I'm going to pause here, because we're back at stage one. Ghouls and ghosts, baby, you do it twice. And that's just sort of how I'm, how I'm going. Obviously, I've been able to work on programming again. Again, I've got to be careful because typing can really trigger pain if I do it for too long. Uh, I've been drawing a lot. That's helped strengthen things. I'm seeing how I go. I'm going to see how I get along with the physiotherapy. And I'd like to do some playthroughs again. I've got to pick and choose my projects. Um, I had intended at the start of this year to go into scripted content on YouTube, but the current world situation kind of threw a wrench to that. I do not get that much time to record by myself. I'm lucky to get even an hour sometimes because everyone is in the house. There is, it's never quiet. But we'll see, we'll see how I get along. This was part one of Ghouls and Ghosts, though it's a second run. As I said before, there isn't that many differences between run one and run two, other than the fact there's a final boss now. However, during the second run, I will have to pick up the ultimate weapon of the game, and that does change the game up quite a bit. At least I think it does. I think it offers just enough of a change 
to make the second run viable and worth it. Anyway, this is Ace. Uh, I hope you enjoyed just hearing from me again. It's been a quite some time. And I'll catch you later.